Hey, thank you so much for clicking on this video. Today I want to show you guys how to create some different bomb effects, whether you want the bomb to explode on impact or you want the bomb to receive a certain amount of damage before it blows up or you want it to, you know, give damage to other game objects. Take a couple of seconds and give a shout out to these commenters. Thank you so much for commenting on my cluster bomb video. And America Hernandez uh, posted this and it's he's talking about changing the cluster bomb effect that we did in a previous video to have the bombs, essentially the bombs will actually trigger the other bombs to explode. Thank you so much for leaving a like and commenting. It really helps out our channel a lot. Let's go ahead and duplicate this bomb prefab. Just hit control D to duplicate and let's rename it to, let's change it to bomb damage. Let's go ahead and click into our scripts and let's duplicate this explosion script, control D. Now remember, this is the same script. It will copy the same script and then put in a one in it. So if we rename this to um, explosion damage, and then we click into it. Make sure you double click into it so you have the right script and you're gonna need to change the class name to what it's actually named in your project window. That should fix any errors. First off, how can we just get this bomb to blow up on a collision? Let's, let's go ahead and try and figure that out. Let's type, uh, we could go ahead and type public void collision, on collision, enter. And then that populates it with a collision that's looking for a collision to put into this function. Let's just call this detonate function inside this collision um, call. So let's type in debug.log parentheses and in the parentheses collision semicolon. Before we hit play, if you remember, we just duplicated this bomb. So we actually have to change the explosion script to the one we just we just changed it to. Let's uh, remove this component, go to scripts and drag on explosion damage in between the components. And there's a couple slots we need to uh, fill. The bomb one you can go ahead back to our prefabs, drag on bomb damage. Then it's looking for our big explosion prefab. Okay, let's lock the inspector so we can go to our particle effect. It's in part of the particle pack, fire explosion, prefabs, big explosion, and we drag that in. So I believe this will explode with anything that has uh, some sort of collider on it. So our ground has a mesh collider. So if we hit play, it should collide with that as soon as it touches it. Cool, it exploded immediately. That's that's not super effective on telling us what it is exactly doing. So typing dot rigid body after. So it's calling null on that rigid body because this ground doesn't actually contain a rigid body component. So if we drag this, if we turn this uh, position to zero for this box, this box does have a rigid body. If we hit play. It's returning cube.1, the name of the game object in the hi hierarchy. I mean, it's actually returning the rigid body of cube1. If you want to specifically just return the name, you can do dot name after the rigid body. Then we hit play, hits cube1. So what if you call a name on a rigid body that doesn't actually have an, a rigid body? It's going to call that famous error a null reference because it's looking for the name from a rigid body that's not actually there. Um, and so that's why it's calling the null reference. But we can get around that by saying if collision.rigidbody does not equal null, do this debug.log and detonate. So now the bomb should only explode if it comes in contact with another rigid body. Um, so our animation's going off because we haven't set that to inactive. It automatically plays on awake. But we drag this rigid body over and it will explode. So as soon as it touches the bomb, that what, what do you guys think that would be good for? Some applications of this would be um, a mine or a proximity mine. 
you can make the um, contact be a lot further away so they don't actually have to touch the bomb to have it blow up, but be in a certain proximity of it. And all those changes we just did, we can put a delay on it by calling the evoke detonate instead. And so you'd have to touch it and then there's five seconds for you to get away for it to blow up. So your unsuspecting player starts wandering towards the bomb, touches it, should have like five seconds to get away. Oh no, too slow. Maybe, oh, head back, oh. <laughs> cool. Awesome. I hope you guys are seeing the different things you can do with the code to get the desired explosion effect that you want. All right, let's create a health on this bomb. And uh, let's go ahead and do that by, and we'll just, we'll have it be an int for now. And let's, let's initialize it to 20. And let's go back to our old explosion script that we've created, that we copied the other one from. Before we have uh, this, previous bomb cause damage to the other bomb. Let's go ahead and just have this bomb immediately blow up that, that bomb in the scene. If you type explosion damage, we're gonna be uh, creating a placeholder for this explosion damage script that it will grab um, after, it, after it explodes. So if we hit, type uh, equals, and then uh, it's checking for hit on the git component. So if we type hit dot, git component, and instead of looking for the rigid body like we are doing up here, let's look for the actual script itself. So it's storing the explosion damage into our explosion damage that's spelled like this. So if we type, well, first let's check to make sure it's not null because if one of these other colliders doesn't have the explosion damage script, we want to, you know, make sure it doesn't throw a null reference. So if explosion damage does not equal null, um, we can just call this detonate function in our explosion script by calling explosion damage. What, whatever we name this right here, we can call it right here, then type dot detonate. All right, so if we look at this error, it says um, inaccessible due to its protection level. And that is because we don't have a public on this void de uh, detonate. Let's go ahead and comment out this collision because we want this bomb to actually just explode by um, coming in contact with the other explosion. If we hit play, go to our prefabs, we drag in a bomb and let's, well, let's drag in another bomb. All right, it exploded our uh, bomb. That's cool, that's awesome. Um, so if you have multiple bombs in the scene, they, they won't explode until uh, uh, there's a bomb that actually initiates it. Okay, now if we want this bomb to create damage to the other bomb bef before the other bomb explodes, let's uh, say this creates, this explosion is going to create negative uh, 10 damage. We can actually just use the same script where we've gotten the explosion damage off the other bomb already. Remove detonate, type health, and hit equals. Explosion damage dot health minus 10. So in, instead of just set, setting the health to negative 10, we're um, just subtracting negative 10 to the initial 20. So it will still have 10 remaining. It should take two bomb explosions to have this bomb explode. So if we hit play, drag this bomb over a little bit and drag in a bomb to our scene. Let's look at our bomb damage. So our health was at 20, it's now at 10. If we drag in another bomb, it should finish exploding the bomb. 
Whoop. Our bomb did go to, uh, our bomb damage did go to zero, but I've forgotten to put that into our other script. So if we go to explosion damage, or uncomment our fixed update in our explosion damage, and instead of checking for this, let's actually check health and make sure it's not equal to zero or less than zero. You know, maybe they get damaged for negative 40 and they're at, sitting at negative 30. We still want it to explode. Some of you might be saying right now that the animator, the color change isn't matching up. It's just sitting there, sitting, it's sitting red. So let's uh, fix that really quick. If you click on the bomb damage, we can um, uncheck this, uncheck the animator, then it won't go off until we enable it. So let's go back to our script. And we need to get the animator component. So let's call animator. Because uh, let's name an animator compon component to store our animator um, component in. Let's just name it uh, color change. Let's call get component again, but this time it's gonna be on the animator. And since this game object is attached to the bomb, it's actually gonna grab the animator that we want. And then let's call color change. Ah, oh, there's something called color changer. Color change dot enable equals true. Okay, let's hit play and see what we got. This uh, bomb Yep, it's unchecked, so the color's not changing. It's not exploding. We're sitting at 20 health. We drag in a bomb. Oh, let's drag this over a little bit so it doesn't go flying off. Let me click on the bomb first. There we go, move it over. Drag in that to the hierarchy. Let's check out where our bomb. All right, let's click on the bomb damage. We're sitting at 10 health, so it should take one more bomb to explode. Let's drag in another bomb. And then it should start with the countdown of this bomb because it's sitting at zero. Awesome. Now remember, the only bomb that's got the damage call on it is this bomb but you can go ahead and call it on this one and you just have to make sure that you're calling it to uh, deliver, you know, uh, damage on itself. It didn't change the bomb damage in the inspector to 10, so a bunch of them are still sitting at 20, but if we drag in another bomb, it will blow up the rest of these if they're gonna be in the, see, it got that one. Cool, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you learned a bit. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. Also leave a comment. I'll try and respond back to you.